welcome back. Like a bad penny, we are back after having been away for a very, very long time. Like a bad penny. <laughs> well, welcome to Connect Wilmington. I'm Susan Riley. And I'm Ruth Kennedy. And with us today is... And today with us is Terry Marciello, the director of Wilmington's Senior Center, director of Elderly Elder Services mm -hmm. at the Bazell Senior Center. <laughs> Terry, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Oh, no problem. My <laughs> pleasure. All right, so we'll reacquaint everybody with our format. Um, we spent a couple of minutes at the beginning of the show going through um, news in the uh, most recent papers, the two town papers. Ruth takes the Wilmington Town Crier, and I take the Wilmington Advocate, and we just kind of update you on what's been going on the last couple of days in the news around town. Ruth, what's going on in the Town Crier? Well, first of all, if you got the Town Crier this week, you noticed that the front page had a picture of one of our local Wilmington residents, John Ingall, here he is. See if I can hold this up. I don't know if our camera person can zoom in on that. Sure, we can. Let's see. <laughs> we like to challenge the camera people here. Is that awake? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, there he. Oh, there okay, he is. Got it, got it. It's uh, local resident John Ingall, and he was recently given um, quite an honor by the Celtics organization. Mm -hmm. He was. Um, all right. I'm sorry. I have to take this back because I've got to look it up now. Hero Among Us, which is. Um, a program that the Celtics started about three years ago under former coach Rick Pitino. And um, John, for the, uh, Mr. Ingall, for those of you who don't know, is a um, leukemia survivor mm -hmm. and has done tremendous work in, uh, to raise awareness and raise fun do some, to do fundraising. And he's um, quite an athlete and has run uh, marathons and such to raise money for uh, research to find a cure for leukemia. So com our congratulations are in order to Mr. Ingdahl and. This is a, quite an honor, and we're obviously quite proud of him to, um, you know, wanted to bring it all up and let people know. And it is a nice story. Yes, it is. It's quite a nice story. Um, another thing that's going on here in town, of course, is our upcoming town elections. Mm, that's and really interesting. Yes, we have probably the most, um, obviously, the most contested race there is going to be is going to be for the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. And currently, there are nine candidates running Counting. for two seats on the board of selectmen. Um, I can't recall an election ever when there have been that many candidates. Normally it's like, you know, the person right. seeking re-election, and then there may be one or two really other people that pull yeah, papers. The most, yeah. But um, nine people have pulled papers. Eight of them are new candidates because one seat is open. Um, and the other, of course, is for um, uh, selectman um, Jim Rooney, who is mm -hmm. um, seeking re-election again. And at, currently there, are, there is one seat available for redevelopment authority. Mm -hmm. And no one has picked up papers for that, so you still have some time to do that. Your papers need to be returned to the town clerk's office by March 2nd. March 2nd, that's Friday. Is that this Friday? No, it's no, not this Friday, no. but it is a Friday. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what's today's date? March 2nd, um, Friday, March 2nd. You need 50 signatures, and you need to bring back the proper forms to the town clerk's office. So... Um, Needless to say, with nine people seeking um, election, we are we're going to need a longer table for this. Hey, you know what? We? You can pick up papers by March second. You have to return them by March sixteenth. See if I'd read a little further. Which is into also the article, Friday. Just which is you know. also Friday. <laughs> so they have to be back by March sixteenth. So, and um, I also want to mention the very successful job there. Susan, of course, is the president of our local chamber of commerce. So kudos to you. Yeah, it's um, a really great event. Job fair over at the Shriner Center. I understand there were hundreds of people there. We got at least um, about six hundred people going in um, to the Shriners, registering to um, seek positions that were available by. 22 companies. There were hundreds of jobs that were open, and um, everybody was very excited about the uh, not only the participants. We had some really, really good companies that were represented um, at the Shriners that day. But uh, we, everybody who came in to look for jobs, also seemed very happy at what they found. So we'll do it again next year. It worked out really well, though. Yeah, yeah. We should probably just uh, say acknowledge outgoing. Executive Director Sandy Murphy. Yes, we should. We should. Yep. We should send our sincere best wishes to Sandy Murphy. Yep, who, who retired who from the after chamber. After 12 dedicated years to the Chamber of Commerce, best of luck, Sandy. Yep, good luck, Sandy. Is that all? Oh, and the next upcoming thing would be the Business Expo 93. The, the, business, the I-93 Business yes. Expo yeah, that we can mention is going to be on April 5th. Um, anybody uh, that has a business in Wilmington or in the Wilmington area that would like to exhibit, please feel free to contact the Chamber at... 6577211, and we'll have more information as we get closer to that event. Excellent. Mm -hmm. What do we have in the Advocate? Um, we have a couple of things. Um, specifically, we wanted to talk about the Mason's uh, Child Identification Program, which is really important for the community. It's being held on Saturday, March 3rd, at the Friendship Lodge, which is next to the fire station on Church Street mm -hmm. in Wilmington. And it's part, um, the, 
it, I think this is something that the Masons have, have done on and off, I mean, pretty, pretty steadily for the last couple of years. But it's part of their CHIP event. It's called, uh, and CHIP stands for a Child Identification Program. And it's the largest, most comprehensive program offered according to the authorities at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And it's a very successful program. Um, what's going to happen is that uh, it's offered at no, no cost to families. That's important to point out. Local police officers will be taking fingerprints of each child. And dentists will be on hand to also take dental um, imprints, which they do. And the dental imprints are actually put into a Ziploc bag. And because they're stored airtight, um, they'll also have DNA samples. And it's, it, it's a totally frightening, consider the possibility that you actually may need um, this kind of tool to, um, to find your child. But it's, um, it's really even unthinkable to even contemplate having to use it. But it's so important to do. Um, and, and everybody should just get down there and participate in this program because it is just so incredibly important. And again, that's going to be on March 3rd. It's a Saturday. And it's going to be from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, at the Mason's Lodge, at the Friendship Lodge, at 32 Church Street in Wilmington next to the fire station. So you should go on down. And then the only other thing that I wanted to mention was, oh, I know there was one other thing. Remind me, Ruth, what was it? I think that might have been it, actually. I know I made a note, but now I can't find it, so... I think we might, that might be it. That oh, might be wow. it. So, isn't it fun to be back? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Nothing unusual. <laughs> Should we take our first break? Yeah. Are they ready in the control room for that? You guys ready for our break? Oh, I guess that's a yes. All right, we're going to take a break and um, watch a public service announcement. When we come back, we'll be talking to Carrie about the uh, elder services program here in Wilmington. Stay tuned. Only you. No, you don't play with matches. That's not cool. Tell mom and dad to break them, stomp them. Yeah, yeah, that's the rule. And when your folks desire to build a fire, hot, hot. clear brush and branches away. Yeah, 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 yeah. And keep water nearby like you ought to. Did someone say otter? We're all counting on you. Only you can prevent forest fires. We're back. We're I back. thought you were going to go to Ruth. <laughs> we're back, and we're here talking with Terry Marciello of the, um, what is it, the Bazell El uh, Senior Center, yep. and you are the Director of Elder Services for Wilmington. You've got it, yeah. How long have you had that position, Terry? I've been in this position for, it'll be three years this past January, mm -hmm. um, and it's been a very busy three years, mm -hmm. so it's been pretty, my predecessor was there 19, so I, I still have quite a few to go. <laughs> Some of these people have been in these <laughs> positions for such a long time. I just find that so gratifying that they stay for the commitment. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you do as the director of elder services. We do a, a variety of things, everywhere from the senior center itself, um, where we have daily programs as an exercise programs, tai chi, ceramics, uh, wood shop, um, those types of programs, a nutrition type class. Then we also have uh, the town nurse that comes up uh, once a week on Thursday afternoons to do blood pressures diabetic screenings. Uh, we also have, you know, also the concept of just being a drop-in. They don't have to be in any programs. Mm -hmm. Come up for a cup of coffee or donut or just to see how their peers are doing. But then it kind of goes uh, go above and beyond that as in they can come up to the center to apply for special programs as in fuel assistance, senior pharmacy, um, try, uh, help assistance with Medicare, uh, Social Security information, that type of thing. Um, then we do further outreach as in transportation um, to medical appointments and within the 13 mile radius of our town. Um, also a home delivered meal program. Mm -hmm. um, so there's quite, it's just a huge variety of services and things that we do for the town. And you're in charge of all of that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of work. I think that's <laughs> wonderful that you do that though. That's a, a great lot of job. Coordinating. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of help there. You know, the, the most important thing is that the senior center really wouldn't, as a center, wouldn't really function without all the volunteers that we have. We have phenomenal volunteers. Mm -hmm. And really, without that, I really wouldn't be able to do my other part of my job without their help. Mm -hmm. And I think so. as heads of member-based or member -based organizations, we can definitely attest to the need <laughs> and the appreciation yes. of volunteers and organizations. Absolutely. They're really the engine that runs everything. Absolutely. You have some specific programs that you want to talk to us about, and I'd mm -hmm. love to hear about those. Well, a couple of things are coming up. Um, as in, with one program is called the File of Life. Uh, Actually, it's not only exciting because we're trying to um, get a service into the elders and help them um, have an all updated medical 
an address and emergency information to have in their home, like on the refrigerator for EMTs or police or fire department to show mm -hmm. up. But also right now it's, we're incorporating as in myself, the police and the fire department are all working together on this. And we want to do a project together, um, all together at a community-based type thing for the elders. And we thought we'd start with this, which is the file of life. Um, Scott Sensabar and myself had started a discussion on it, and he had a grant, and he decided to use the grant money towards this program. And um, we're going to have several other programs in the future working all together. Uh, but what this program is, is um, here we have a magnet that goes on the refrigerator. I don't know if anyone can see. And then a form to fill out to go inside that magnet. And what it, on this form is, like I said, anywhere from all your medical information, all their um, emergency contacts, if there are allergies, that type of thing. So when the EMTs come in, this will be on the person's door. There'll be a label on the door. Look at that. They'll be able to go right to the, and when they see the label on the door, they'll know to go to the refrigerator, pull this form out, and they'll have all the information they need. Also, due to the HMOs and that type of thing, there's only certain hospitals. These days, we don't have really the luxury of Sometimes the hospitals are overloaded and they mm -hmm. have to go to another one, but the hospital, their choice, which one they'd like to go to, that type of thing will sure. most definitely help the EMTs. Um, and then one, they also will have a, a, a piece to go into their purse or their wallets. So when they'll have them on their purse, and say, for example, if someone should get hurt up at the senior center or um, have chest pains or just about anything, we can pull this out of their purse if we know it's there, if they, we know that they've signed up for the program. And then we have everything there for them too, especially notifying um, their, their relatives. But we also, with this, when people are, uh, sign up, when the people that we know about, we also make a copy for our files. Mm -hmm. Is this, this file of life program, that's not specific just to Wilmington? This is something that occurs throughout other communities? It's a community's choice. To mm -hmm. tell you the truth, I'm not sure how many communities are actually involved in it. Um, but is it something that EMTs are used to going into the refrigerator and grabbing when they yeah, see they the used to on have, the door? Yeah, they used to have, um, it was like a pill bottle, and it was in the refrigerator, it's like quite a few years ago. Hmm. But what happens is if after you leave it there, say it's supposed to be at a certain location, and then the ketchup oh, guess, bottle tips right. it over. Or, and you have to go digging for right. it. Right, and then the condensation also makes mm -hmm. it run. So this is, a, they've, this is a, a different way of doing it. With and it's right there on the refrigerator. I think that's a wonderful that's a idea. That's a really good idea. Wow. Especially so. because so many, um, not, just, not just seniors even, a lot of people are on many different medications. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to speak for yourself, Correct. you know, having, you could, you could potentially be in a life-threatening situation mm -hmm. if you were to be in a hospital and, you know, you're already there for a life-threatening situation and they're not able to administer medication or whatever to start treatment to help you, you know, if, if, if they don't know mm -hmm. what Most conditions definitely. you already have. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah, I think that's really important. So we're really, really excited about this. Good. Very excited about this. Is this, just out of curiosity, is this something that you can also put like a, um, one of those, uh, I want to say living wills in, like a, a DNR? Yes, actually there is a part in here that, um, that they can fill out for that. That's yes. outstanding. Um, the DNRs are usually kept within the uh, notification on here. Not resuscitate, by the yeah, way. Yeah, sorry. They are notified in here that that gets on either doctor, the doctor's file or at the hospital's file. That Outstanding. Mm -hmm. wow. so. Really interesting. I think that's so helpful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we hope that it, it will be, and we hope that that, I mean, the big thing is, is that we have plenty of supplies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now everyone can get one. And uh, just to make people more and more aware to please come down and fill it out, it's really worth it. It's so, most definitely worth so it. So all of this information that um, someone would need to participate is all at the senior center? Yep. Yeah. There, and um, also the, all, also, uh, the police, police and department fire. and the fire department. And okay. this is something that you could also help some of the um, seniors in Wilmington fill out to at the Correct. senior That's center? Correct. Actually, we're lucky to have some of the uh, police department and um, fire department come up to the senior center to help fill it out and make it more of an exciting thing. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the month, on the 28th of February, um, the crew are going to all go down to Deming Way. Mm -hmm. So people that live in the Dem Deming Way housing, um, if they're unable to get out, we can go in there nice. and uh, help them fill it out. Now, does part of your job also entail um, overseeing um, any programs or activities that go on at Deming Way as well? Well, actually, the housing director there oversees Deming Way. Mm -hmm. um, we try to, you know, any, any newsletters or anything that we have from the Senior Center, of course, goes all out to Deming Way. Uh, we provide transportation for them and that type of thing. They, they're just considered an elder in the community. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And they get just as much of attention as anybody else in the community. Great. And you also wanted to talk about Beacon Light? 
Yeah, I want to mention um, the beacon light also. This is also, uh, this is from the Reading Municipal mm -hmm. um, Lighting Department that actually, um, Bernie Nally, who now is our, right oh, sorry, right there. <laughs> had actually got uh, started. Um, this is actually a regular light bulb that can go outside, you know, outside your lamp post, the lamp post light, or a light that's right in the, say if it's in your middle of your living room, big picture window. And what it is is say if there's an emergency, you've called 911, or your spouse has called 911, or your child, you put this light on, flick it on twice, and then this light will continue to flash until the EMTs, the fire department, or the police arrive. What a great so idea. So it's more of an enhancer to get the attention to the house. That so that they're not aimlessly driving down the road looking for a street number. Right, especially where some of, the, some of our streets are very hard to find the houses, per se, if they're set back. Right. Like or the numbers might be off and they have to go up and down. Correct. Know. Mm -hmm. yep. correct. We were very fortunate that 100 of them were donated by Reading um, Municipal Light Department. And right now, I'd say we've handed out a little over half, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're still in the process of handing them out. And anyone, feel free to give the center a call um, to be able to get a light, and we'll make sure either um, they can come to the center or the police. Again, we're trying to make the connection so people mm -hmm. feel more comfortable in seeing myself, the, uh, the police department, and the fire department. The police department will be more than willing to put them up. At that's their home. That's, that's wonderful. That's great. Another good program. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Um, now I know there was an issue you wanted to bring up about the. I, no, I, I wrote down senior pharmacy. Yeah, program. the senior. Actually, it's the uh, prescription advantage plan. Mm -hmm. For people that are on the the senior pharmacy program, it was a program that was run by Ma by Massachusetts um, that assisted in uh, prescription paying for prescriptions. Um, they allotted one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars per elder that were qualified for this. Um, uh, so it had to be 65 and over. Um, that program I don't want to talk too much about because it's ending September, mm -hmm. um, as of September 1st. There's a new program coming in, and, and again, it's called uh, Prescription Advantage Plan. And what that is, is it's not a, um, it's not a federal plan, it's like an insurance plan. Um, and, and they're fine, doing a lot of fine tuning for it to getting it out to the community. Um, you'll start you'll be able to apply for it as of April 1st. Um, but of course, with new applications and new programs, there's always new questions. How will this cover, you know, what, how much will it cost? Um, for people on the senior pharmacy plan right now, not to assume that immediately you're gonna go on this plan. You do have to fill out applications, uh, make yeah. sure right. you're okay, to, um, that you're eligible for it. I mean, you're eligible, mm -hmm. of course, because you were on the other plan, but how much it's gonna cost, there are, co-pays and deductibles and premiums and um, so please keep an eye in the newspapers uh, you know everywhere from the Boston Globe to the Lowell Sun everybody's been having it in the paper because everyone's starting to get a little antsy about it mm -hmm. we are having a special um, a special day in April I believe it's April 18th uh, where Cindy Phillips who's the coordinator of a shine program which are volunteers um, that help elders fill out any insurance type information um, she will be at the center on April 18th to go over applications, go over the specifics of the program. Uh, but meanwhile, I can send any information people would like. Excellent. But it is going to be the, like the big buzzword because insurance and prescriptions, prescription costs are just outrageous. Sky They're skyrocketing. In fact, I had an elder who came in last week and who was on a new cancer medication. Um, she, went to the, her, she went to the pharmacy to go pick it up for, and it was uh, for 180 pills over $300. Wow. So of course she couldn't get the medication and we signed up for the program. We were assisting her mm -hmm. um, and she knew well enough to be able to come up to the senior center so we could help her out. Right. But and these are the people that need it the most and can't afford it the least. Yeah. It's, it's a tragedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when is that new, new program supposed to kick in, Terry? On April, April 1st. Okay. And your program that you're going to have to describe it is again on? In April, April 18th. Okay, great. Really yeah. And for more information about that, they can call the Bazell Center? Yeah, and also on my weekly articles. I have articles in the both in the, in the Times and in the um, Advocate. Mm -hmm. And to please keep an eye on those articles because I'll give any up-to-date information I have, I'll make sure they're in there. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Do we go to our community calendar? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to take a break and go to our community um, bulletin board. Or our community calendar, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, get a pen and paper and make some notes of some of these dates that are coming up, and we will be right back.
now. Right now I am. Hello. Hi, we're back. <laughs> we're just laughing about it. We haven't done this in such a long we're time. A we're trying to get back in a sink, so. I have a question. I was wondering, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually very curious about, um, is, a, is a senior 55 or 65? Actually 60. 60. Really? See, I would have gotten that wrong on Trivial Pursuit. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. 60. Well, actually it depends. Say for our center, it's 60. Mm -hmm. But for some insurance plans, some different HMOs, it it's can be 55. 55. So it, you, the, the question usually varies between 55 and 60. depends upon what okay. type of thing you're actually categorizing yourself. But to take advantage of the town programs that the Elder Services offers, 60. it's 60 and that's it. Okay, that's yep. great to know. Yeah. Just in case I'm not the only person that knew that. Now everybody else does. That's right. Do you have some other programs you want to tell us about? Well, I just don't want to mention, um, we had our, our health, we had a health fair um, back in September, and the big focus for our health fair was uh, helping to prevent osteoporosis, and we had this bone um, scan, and it could tell you how dense, the bone density mm -hmm. of your ankle, which would presume the rest of your body, well, that day the machine broke, so not even one person got to use it. So we're mm -hmm. very excited to say that, um, I believe it's April 5th, it's going to be uh, bone scan day, bone density day, and we'll be having this machine. And anybody um, 60 or over, f please feel free to come on up. Um, and we're going to we'll have it for the whole day. And it's a, kind of like a big deal because uh, this machine is quite the quite oh. the machine. And actually, I hope to use it for myself too. But anyway, <laughs> your ankle bone isn't that interesting? Your ankle well, the bone. Heel, actually, it's a machine where you place your heel in, and mm -hmm. and then um, it can tell by your heel as wow. to your bone density. Wow. I mean, they also have other machines where you could do your hip and that type of thing, but. Um, Very interesting. So. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. We'll say cool. thank you to Ann Fitzgerald, the town nurse, for getting that thank off you, the ground thank for you, us. Ann. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, well, we are also doing, enough. we're also doing ID pictures now. We have a new Polaroid um, type cam a camera for um, ID pictures, so we're, trying to not only update the file of life, but also if anybody needs a picture ID um, to prove that they're a citizen, either to you, senior citizen, to use uh, at the grocery stores or at the, the games or at, to get their discount um, or just have another ID on them, please feel free to come down because we do every, we have the film and everything, we're all set to go. Outstanding. Excellent. So. All right. So a lot, of, a lot of good programs going on at the senior center. Yeah, it's actually, it's an awful lot. That's, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that Bloomington does such a good job taking care of its elders and providing these important services. Yeah, oh, I thank so you. Too. I do too. Good job. Now, um, some of the other, I just was curious, I mean, you have, um, are there, is the meals, the senior meals program connected with you? Or? Yes, the home delivered meals, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. The meals are prepared at the uh, West Intermediate. Um, and then we have two home deli delivered meal drivers that go out and they uh, deliver approximately 40 meals each. Mm -hmm. So there's 80 meals a day from Monday through Friday. Um, and then we also have a, con the, uh, it's called a congregate site, which is also at the West Intermediate, where uh, seniors can have lunch right there at the school. Mm -hmm. And all these, it just costs a dollar a meal. And nice. let me tell you, they have quite, quite the meal for themselves between soup, the hot entree, um, dessert, vegetables, and everything. It's it's a very good meal. Heck, where else can you eat for a dollar a meal? Isn't that, that Monday something? To Friday? Monday through Friday, also during the school year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then also during the, we shouldn't say just during the school. It's actually all year round. Oh, we have wow. it all year round now. We Even used to during not, vacations in summer and stuff. We used to not have it during vacations, but we're we're very happy to say that it's going through vacations and everything. It's That's just a, such a necessity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would imagine it. that for. For some seniors, it may be difficult to. You it's know, also cook a, for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it could be. You know, you know, I don't like to cook for myself. You. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's a, a good way if someone's having a hard time. It's a check in once a day too. Mm -hmm. oh, to make sure that the elders yes, okay. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, this has been no really problem. interesting thank to you hear for about inviting these. Me. Thank you very much. And right. if there are any questions about any of these programs, they can call you at six five seven seven five nine five. Great. Very good. All right. Well, that's another edition of Connect Wilmington. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll be seeing you soon. Till then, take care.
that's why I'm in a bad mood. Welcome to Connect Wilmington. My name is Ruth Kennedy. And I'm Susan Riley. With me is Susan Riley, and, the, and today our guest is Town Manager Michael Kyra. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you for asking me. It's a pleasure to be back. <laughs> That's right. He's our first return guest. That's right. We now we now we have a tradition wow. of return guests. See, see how good we are. <laughs> we return guests. Boy, he wasn't oh boy. frightened. You weren't frightened the first time, and you came back. I made it through. It wasn't easy. But <laughs> I, I made it through. Your well, you know, comments. you know, coming here is like you know sitting under this microscope, you know. Well, it's funny because everybody says, well, what, what do we talk about? What will we do? What's the format? Give me an agenda. And it's almost like we say, you know, well, we just talk. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever you want to talk about is fine with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so people seem pretty happy about coming back. I think so. Which I'm pleased. Which we are glad and happy to welcome you back. <laughs> Thank you. our first official returning <laughs> guest. <Thank you. laughs> We don't want to jump into the newspapers? Um, sure, just briefly, because we have yep. a lot to talk to Mr. Kyra about. So. Definitely. Um, I had a couple things in today's town crier, holding up the cover. Um, first of all, and it's going to be hard to zoom in on this, I want to just let people know that Marjorie Lehman, who is a Wilmington resident, um, she's a painter, has, um, is going to have her work displayed at the Kaji um, ASO, ASO, I probably pronounced that wrong, studio in Boston on Saturday. March 24th through Sunday, April 1st. And I thought that that was really cool to be able to have someone local. I don't know if I'll hold that up for Dick's camera. Um, to have someone local and have their work on display. So I thought maybe we should just let people know. No, if they were interested in going to see her work, that they can. I unfortunately, oops, there we go. I don't know where the studio is, and I apologize for that. But, um, but you can look it up. There it is. You can look it up. It's on you the front page of the paper. And of course, it was really funny. I thought this picture was really cute, so I just wanted to mention <laughs> there are a couple of really good anglers. Is that what you would call? Yep. What's a fisher person? An angler? Well, um, that's one word. Thank you. Um, Peter and Ryan Olivieri. Mm -hmm. Olivieri. Olivieri. Um, caught a really giant fish on their vacation in Florida, apparently. So if you get the town crier, I thought this was really cute. Yeah, there they are. It's one of those great fish. Pictures. It's like a fish story that's actually true. I know, actually, they really can't they go back and say, I once evidence. caught a fish that, this yes, see, big. There it is. I don't know if you can tell, but that is the fish. It weighed 38 pounds. Bigger than they are. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of a fish is that? looks almost um, like a giraffe fish. A black snapper. It's not even black. No, it's not. It's speckled, actually. <laughs> why is it, it called like a speckled kind of snapper? Well, I don't know. Why, why, why? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this sounds like a question for a four-year-old. Why is the fish called a black snapper? <laughs> right up there with, why is the sky blue? Because it's reflecting off the blue cooler, and that's an inside joke, so you wouldn't know that. No, I guess I wouldn't. <laughs> Who would? Sorry. Except somebody on the inside. I, I interject guess. personal humor. <laughs> anyway, we'll forgive you. Thank you. The only thing that I wanted to point out in the front of the advocate amidst like all of the other information um, about the storm outages and and the big snow that we got. This is such a great piece. That this is a, this is a wonderful picture here of a snowblower, if you can see right here, and this is the roof of the town hall. And I just thought that really just sort of wraps up exactly what this past week has been like there. for everybody around here between like that, what did we just discussed what this was called, a uh, roof collapse emergency yes. that the governor had issued about all of these little, um, you know, how if you have a flat roof, you had to really clean it off. And actually, there was quite a bit of roof collapses around, wasn't there? There were. There and were a number like a of them. War zone of them right now. Uh, the whole thing, the, half the, the tree the, fell off. Everything looks like a war zone. I there know. are trees everywhere. Well, I know. We had a tree, actually, half of a tree fell on our front door, and then about 15 minutes later, half of a tree fell on our back door. And we actually had to climb out of our kitchen window in order oh to get God. the tree out the back door so that we could shovel and collect the tree off the front, which I think is still there, if I can Holy remember cow. correctly. But yeah, it's, That's incredible. But it was fun, wasn't it? It was like the you know, first time it was since we were storm. kids. Did you think it was a beautiful storm? <laughs> I guess it was a pretty storm, uh, <laughs> unless but you had a fighter. Storm. And yeah. I, I think your your 
focusing on the uh, front page and the picture is uh, interesting because for the town of Wilmington, the storm is, is really still going on because mm -hmm. uh, even as I left town hall to come over to the studios earlier, uh, we did have staff up on the roof uh, doing some work, patching uh, where necessary. Wow. Um, we needed to take over two feet of snow off the roof, and we had a crew uh, both at the town hall roof and at the uh, Boutwell school roof, mm -hmm. uh, two flat roofs in town, and obviously we worked at all of the other roofs and the, and the, the drains and what have you, just to uh, make sure we weren't going to have the leaking and that we weren't going to have any collapses. So. We, we took off so much snow off the roof that we then had the public works come by with the snow plow to uh, replow the area at wow. Town Hall. What a cool shot that was. Yeah. Actually, this probably, we should um, we'll be discussing. Before the show, we were talking to uh, Mr. Kyra about things that we wanted to discuss. And one of them, of course, was the town's response to this really a series of storms. And we had two snowstorms in one week back right. to back. that both dumped a lot of snow in the mm -hmm. area. And um, I know that there were a lot of power outages. Obviously, what, there were a lot of limbs that were down. Um, I'm sure people have a lot of questions on, on various issues relative to that. And um, I was wondering if you might want to address a little bit about the town's response. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, uh, as folks know, there was obviously an awful lot of snow, an awful lot of heavy, wet snow, uh, high winds, which did bring down limbs and wires mm -hmm. throughout town. The, problem that you had, Susan, uh, was not unlike what mm. many folks had, including myself. We had a tree go down in my driveway, and the person that plowed uh, me out was it plowed me a new driveway, essentially right <laughs> no. over the grass. That was the only way that I could get out to uh, help uh, help uh, do what I could during, wow. the, uh, uh, during the storm. But mm -hmm. that, those were the kinds of uh, tales we were hearing everywhere. Uh, the fact is the first storm in Wilmington, uh, we measured it about 22 inches, and the second storm was a little over uh, 10 inches. So Did we you had like go out there 32, with the 33 inches. The Public Works Department actually has a, a spot where they measure every hour to see how the snow is coming per hour, and then they clear it off again. And that's mm -hmm. the way you um, technically you measure snow um, because the snow would compact as, well it, with the as it, it goes down with the weight of the snow and with, the, with the sun. Yeah. So that's how you determine how much snow. Uh, but there were folks all over town who. Um, really pitched in, I think, to help their neighbors and to uh, respond in a very responsible way. Mm -hmm. And certainly I can't say enough about the, um, the public works crews and the public building crews and uh, all of the others, the uh, police and fire and mm -hmm. the dispatchers and, and everyone who pitched in. Mm -hmm. um, one point I would make is that, uh, as you know, we have a, a new uh, middle school that came online back in uh, August of this past year. And when that we were was open. And that was open. You know, when we were talking about uh, the middle school, we talked about the need to have a location uh, with a generator and with the capacity to handle emergencies. And we, we established that uh, as a shelter. And, and we had people there. We had, we had people who were on oxygen. We had people who were in wheelchairs. We had families who just needed a place to, to be. And then when we opened the school on Thursday morning, on Wednesday, the prior Wednesday evening, we shifted operations over to the uh, Senior Citizen Center where uh, those folks did a great job as well. So, um, you know, we're going to be looking at our response. Obviously, I think it's always important to uh, take a look at uh, anything you do. We'll be doing that uh, over the next uh, few months. But I think all in all, Wilmington uh, reacted uh, pretty well. Difficult for the residents who, who lost power. And it, I think if residents really want to know about that situation, uh, they probably talked, uh, they probably already had the opportunity to. Uh, listened to the Board of Selectmen meeting when Len Rucka, the general manager, uh, was on explaining all about the power outage. And um, they can probably get more specific information just by listening uh, to that program. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be re repeated uh, over the next few weeks mm -hmm. uh, on WCTV. And also, I would invite folks to attend a meeting at Town Hall on the 28th mm -hmm. of March at 7 o'clock when the Ready Municipal Light Department Advisory Board will convene a meeting and we'll be able to answer any questions that people may have about the, the town's response and Reading Light's response uh, to the power outage. Interesting. Great. Yeah. Well, I know one, some of the other things that we had talked about briefly were um, the number of um, tree limbs that are down. Is there any plan to? Yeah, in terms of the cleanup? Yeah. We are working right now on a cleanup. Here's one of the problems that we have, and, and so do other communities. You remember three or four years ago when there was a, um, a hurricane, and a, a, again, a strong storm where folks didn't necessarily lose power, but we lost an awful lot of branches and limbs. And we decided to go around 
uh, over a period of what we thought was going to be one or two weeks. Uh, and we asked people to pile up their yeah. branches, to cut them down in size, and to take those that were damaged by the storm and put them to the side of the road. And one or two weeks turned out to uh, two or three months. Mm -hmm. And it became very difficult.